I'd like to call the reorg meeting to order. We could all stand for the pledge to the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first presentation, I know the board and I would like to thank uh, outgoing board member Jeff Hyde for his six years of service to the board and to the students in the community of the Oakfield, Alabama Central School District. I know he couldn't be here today to accept this plaque, but on behalf of the board and, and myself, I'd like to um, publicly thank him for his six years of service, again, <coughs> to the students and to the Oakfield School District. I don't know if anybody else would like to say anything. Sure, so here's the plaque here, and uh, maybe Jeff will be listening at home in a couple of days. <laughs> maybe not. Um, but thank you, Jeff, for uh, everything for the six years that you spent with us, and um, maybe we'll see him here again at some point in the next few years. We'll see. Terry, do we have anybody else that wanted to address the board? Um, Mr. Engel, Christian, and Charlie. Okay, I'll call you up. Okay. I got to put all my thoughts here together. My name's Ed Engel, and I'm your BOCI rep. I'm here to, during your reorg meeting to ask you to join the Farm Bureau. Just like you belong to the New York State School Board Association, like you belong to rural schools and other associations. My guests are Carly Smith from Oakfield and Ger uh, Kristen Gerald from Alba. I want you to hear their prospects, what they thought of the program later on when I finish up here. When we started the drive to get ag back in the classroom, who was the first one we called? It was the Farm Bureau. I would like to have you join an organization whose goals and objectives are much in line with our school, saying rural schools and community grow together better. Partnering, collaboration, strength of numbers, a uniform voice is important in today's economy for success. Farm Bureau is an independent, non-government, voluntary organization. Ag is our largest economy. It is the voice of 28,000 farmers in New York State. Farmers are the largest landowners and pay the most school taxes. I believe that membership will increase our visibility as a school district, show the ag community that we are with them and we support them. It will help Julia, I always pronounce her name, Neuronic, our new FFA district president, when she makes visits to different organizations that her school belongs to the Farm Bureau and supports ag. Farm Bureau raises and supports funds for regional and state FFA programs and events, and I've been to a couple of fundraisers myself. The Genesee Farm Bureau offers a $1,000 scholarship to any uh, graduating senior. Uh, nationally, the FFA and the Farm Bureau signed a memorial agreement to work together to grow leaders, build communities, and strengthen ag education. Your Genesee Valley BOCES, Rural Schools Association, are both members of the Farm Bureau and the Grange. Uh, Rural School also sponsors two $1,500 scholarships to the FFA Speakers Contest. The dues are $75 a year or $99 for two years. The Angles feel so strongly about this that we're willing to pay for the dues. Very simple, make it, do you have any questions or have any problems with it? Uh, so I think uh, we got, was it 55,000 to start the FFA program from the state? And I'm sure Farm Bureau was a big part of making sure those state funds are earmarked uh, for the FFA. So. That was the first one I contacted, uh, Matt, when I went out there to, who to contact, who to make, you know, with, so. and um, Ranzenhofer and that, so. So I'm saying they support us. We're a big community. No problem? Okay, well, uh, Carla, do you want to get up and tell them about your uh, egg experience here in school and the FFA? Just briefly, don't. Okay, well, I've been in FFA for two years. I'm joining it again next year. I'm the vice president. Um, it's given me a lot of good opportunities. I went to state convention and national convention 
this year at state convention, I was able to do the Teach Ag SAE, not SAE, um, LD, which means I can like go against all different kids throughout the state and I gave a presentation, but like for little kids on like leadership skills, but it was ag related. So it was like taking animal skills and like how we interact with animals and use them when we are interacting with people. So that was really cool. I placed eighth in like the state. So I was able to do that through FFA. And then that's like a big end of the year thing. But throughout the year, there's many different opportunities that we can do like just in the classroom and then the barn and we're doing doing a lot of new things so that's really cool and I think it's a really good experience so thank you for letting us do that and I hope that we can continue it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christian Gerald. I uh, was in the program from day one. I've seen it grow. I think it's been really good. Um, thank you guys for letting us put up that really nice barn out back. I think that has helped a lot too with this program, teaching kids. Um, did you have a cow? No, you didn't have a cow. Okay, <laughs> never mind. We'll so, Emma had a cow. <laughs> Jared Graham had a cow. And then um, we bought two other cows, which um, all ag classes have contributed to that and have learned somehow from that. Um, we also have pigs. We had chickens. We kind of got rid of the chickens because chickens are kind of in the butt. No, check people. <laughs> and they just weren't really helping us any. So, but uh, anyways, we had chickens. Those they were a good learning experience too. Do not have chickens. In the <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so anyways, I think this program needs to keep growing more and more. We need to figure out ways to keep you know increasing our numbers. We need to keep going. Even though I currently graduated last weekend so I can no longer be in the FFA it's kind of sad I was thinking to myself at the at our um, uh, banquet that we had I'm like man I'm like this is going to be my last FFA thing it's kind of that kind of stinks but I hope you know generations behind me will be able to have the same experiences I have with seeing cows seeing pigs working with them because even though you know you own one of the biggest dairy farms in Genesee County, actually probably the biggest dairy farm in Genesee County. Not many kids still know, you know, what it's like to work with cows or what it's like to work with pigs, you know what I mean? There's so much more we can teach more kids. And it's not even just about the cows and the pigs. Me, I'm going for mechanics. You know, Mr. Hoffines has done his small engines and welding class through FFA. And there's also um, competitions, like she said, um, in the FF, like state convention, national convention, and just other, you know, different fairs and stuff. So, but I think you guys should support this because they've supported us a lot. And I think we need to kind of just keep growing to keep next generations into agriculture because it is starting to become a dying breed. Uh, I, I graduated 31 kids. I know it's a small number, but I am the only farmer of 31 kids. So, Chris, it's kind of hard. Tell them about the national convention with sixty-five thousand kids in Indianapolis. Actually, she could tell you more about oh, the national convention. Well, I went to national convention. Two years ago as a freshman, I wasn't supposed to go. It's supposed to be for upperclassmen, and there was no one else left to go. So I got to go. Uh, it was a really good experience. There's so many, there's people from all across the United States, plus Puerto Rico, and somewhere else, I think, I don't know. But it's really good, and there's like a lot of different people there, and everyone has a different FFA experience, even though you're all in the same club. So that was super cool to like talk to different kids and see what they're doing in their chapters and how we can implement that into our chapter and keep growing. And there's like a giant um, ex convention center, I think they call it. And there's colleges from all over the place and different agriculture companies. So we can talk to them and see other ways that we can grow and like how Farm Bureau is like just keep working with different people to try and expand our um, and like she said, we've been working, um, we've been talking to Byron Burge, and um, we got some ideas actually from Albion, you know, with like kind of how to, you know, get the ball rolling when we first started, because I mean, we really didn't have much, we just had $55,000, and it was kind of like, well, how do we use it, you know, how do we go about, you know, taking 55000 
and making more out of it and helping kids learn from that. You know what I mean? You know, isn't fifty-five thousand dollars nice? Yeah, but it doesn't teach kids anything. You know, you need to implement that somehow to keep teaching kids about farming and stuff. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. What happens to the animals during the summer? So they're actually going through the 4-H program. Well, to Emma and Jared's are. They joined 4-H like as a co with FFA. So they're in 4-H and they're taking their animals to the fair next week, two weeks. And they will go through the whole process like every other 4-H member does, show the cows. They also went to other shows throughout the year. So they're prepared and they'll show them and then they will auction them off. The other two, I believe, are going to market next week. So they're just used as a learning process and then we sell them, we get money back and we put, them, put the money back in the program to get more animals next year. Do you have... Um feeder pigs or do you have a, yep. a firewood cell? No, nope, we have feeder pigs. So those guys will be going in July, one day. I think they've left. They haven't left yet. <laughs> they haven't left yet. They're leaving, they're leaving, I think they leave soon, like in the next <laughs> two or three weeks. They're gone before fair, I think. Oh, are they? Oh, okay. This is why I'm just the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> Chris says Monday. <laughs> Monday? Okay. So we're going Monday. Sully so Bear, the pigs are going Monday. Okay. So do you name them? <laughs> yes. yes. They, they name them. The animal science class is in the barn all the time. I was in welding and Christian was an independent study. So we were in the barn as much as other members. But yeah, they did name them. <laughs> That's <dead. laughs> Yeah. Even the pigs are named too. Just, I don't know why. <laughs> So we have an alumni chapter at Christian for FFA, so it's not over just because you graduated. Yeah, I know. We've got a dinner in October, and we'll need help, so this continues forever. Well, I'll be like four hours late. You can come back. I'll text yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, that, yeah, that one. I'll be four hours that way. Where are you going to college? Cobalt skill. What are you going to study? Ag mechanics. Ag mechanics. Yep. Excellent. So keeping it in the agricultural world. I have another question. Is there, have you branched out yet, or do you have any plans to branch out into any of the plant-based agriculture? Maybe not on a grand scale, like 5,000 acres of corn, but. I thought, I had this crazy idea that I wanted to start doing hay, because right now hay is kind of a money maker, but I, because I, you know, as well as anybody else, hay is kind of that thing that we haven't really gotten a lot of like last summer we had no rain so it didn't grow and then this year it's just rained all the time and you still can't get it so I mean now we're kind of starting to get to it but a lot of horse people like hay too like small square well we call it idiot squares because be careful really I'm a horse person <laughs> <laughs> just stop right there <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong square. with them. Small squares. Small squares, yeah. Yeah. You can have your large squares and your small squares. Just large there. squares are easy. You just go right with a tractor and you go stack two high, put them on a trailer, and or you do the round bale, or you do the round bales where you just set do the spikes and that's it. Small squares, you gotta like. Oh, oh, oh great. That's like 600 more that I have to unload. Yeah. That's how we build our muscles and our football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I have nothing against small squares, actually. <laughs> it's just a joke we have. Cause well, you're going into mechanics, so you want to use the big equipment. I yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, what's your thoughts? $75 a well spent. Dollars, I think. It's yeah. definitely. And you, especially when you hear it from them, not from me, but from them. So. Good. Well, we appreciate your donation too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that one. <laughs> we thought three years probably would be better. <laughs> but this is the time to do it during the reorg, the, the organizations you're going to belong to. So okay. we'll be doing that a week from now at both these same things. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. 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 Good luck at the fair. Pass on our good wishes. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Moving on. Um, 
all board members and new board members, you have in front of you your oath of office. For new and re-elected board members. I want to hear Justin say this. Stand up, song. Let's do this right. I think I think together as a board we can uh, read that aloud uh, together as as one oath. Board members, um, next item is the election of the board president. I call for nominations for the board president at this time. Nominate Matt Lamb. Second. There's a nomination for Matt and second. Anybody else? Any other nominations for board president? So there's a nomination for Matt, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hopefully Matt accepts that. Accept accept that? Yes. <laughs> Accepted. Congratulations. So Matt, I have the oath of office for sure. school board president. Take care of that. I guess we'll take uh, nominations for vice president. Do you have to take your oath first? Oath is taken. Anybody <laughs> interested in the vice president? Nominate Jen Kirkham. A second. Any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of Jen Kirkham as vice president? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Congratulations, Jen. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're on to uh, appointment of other officers, right? We resolve that item 6-2 through 6-8 be approved via consent agenda for the nomination. So move. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes. Uh, Appointments for the Board of Education be resolved item 7 2 through 7 13 be approved via consent agenda for the nomination. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, 8.1 be resolved at 8 2 through 8 5 be, a, be approved via consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes. <clears throat> that was 82 through 86, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I'll fix that. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Let's see. Here's all items 92 through 94. 92 through 93. Be approved via consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, let me know if there's someone here. If we, we're going to have a discussion about Farm Bureau. Uh, and then the 10 one, uh, 10 2 through 10 8, the result may be approved via consent agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. <coughs> Be resolved that the bonding of personnel for 2019-2020 school year be approved as follows, as is written there. I have a no nomination. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes? Uh, be resolved items 12-2 through 12-3 be approved via consent agenda. So moved. Second. 
second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Uh, be resolved that OACS be authorized to partake in cooperative bidding through GVAP, EduTech, and Erie One BOCES for 2019-2020 school year. So. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Uh, be resolved items 14.2 through 14.4 be, be approved via consent agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Yes, I want to ask John for a clarification. I got your response, but um, my question was, is there a parent advocate, because that wasn't listed as a member, and you said there isn't a standing one Correct. And then you gave two names of people. I was familiar with Heather's name, but not the other person. Is she employed by the school district as well? No, she's not. Um, really, um, there's there's two two tiers to it. Um, parents can obviously bring their own advocate. Right. Um, sometimes parents feel that there should be another parent advocate, but they don't have one of their own. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they will ask the district. So um, depending on if parents are comfortable with the school employee being a part of it, or we also reach out to the other parent who is just a parent of the community that um, would attend. Is that um, person familiar with special ed issues? I believe so. I have not met her personally, but yes, I believe so. The school employee so, question I had for clarification was nothing against or wouldn't fully support that person's capabilities, but that person holds a non-tenured position and therefore doesn't have any protection. So is that a good idea for her to be in that position when if she's going to advocate for her parents and students that might not be what administration would like? Would that make her in any way vulnerable? No, that has nothing to do with her evaluation or her job here as a school employee. It's it's just an advocate. It's, it's somebody that's there to um, you know, bring some insight, bring some recommendations, and be a part of the discussion during the CSE meeting, so. Right, and I, I'm i fully confident that she could do that. I just was concerned that her, that would put her in a vulnerable position if she felt the need to advocate for something that wasn't popular with administrators or, and I wouldn't want to see that happen, so that's what I wanted. No, and, and those meetings are confidential, so nothing that happens in that meeting, whatever happens and whatever decision is made by the committee, that's all confidential, so that would never be leaked out to somebody's... Um, well, it's all full right. of administrators, that's the whole list of people that are on, right, also that, on the committee. Right, but that would be nothing that would transpire outside of that meeting into something else. So they would never retaliate against her or... Okay, because I wouldn't want her to be in that vulnerable position. Nope. Okay. It's not that I, again, didn't question sure. her abilities. I think she has them. I just didn't want her to be compromised in any way. Sure. <clears throat> any other discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 15.1 uh, be resolved that Danelle Backey be appointed to position of Medicaid Compliance Officer for the 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, let's see, 16, establishment of the district mileage reimbursement rate be resolved that the current IRS mileage rate be established as a district reimbursement rate for the 2019-2020 school year. Any motion? So uh, any discussion? Do we know when uh, state ed's going to set those rates? What are they supposed to call? The mileage? Mileage reimbursement. That's done by tuition. the IRS and that's right. done in tuition. tuition rates. Oh, yeah, that's not done for this year until they have all of our expense information added in. So that won't happen until December. So 7, 18, 19 gets retroed back in December of 2019 because they use actual expenditures. Um, that you put in, what that I put in from our uh, report at year end. And so our final numbers aren't done until September. We have to have those into the state reporting system by the end of September. And then they come out, they spit out uh, results in December. That's based on like an average cost per student? 
there's different, they have um, uh, costs for gen ed kids and then for special ed kids. And yes, it is a cost for students. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes? Uh, school cafeteria prices be resolved as detached list for school lunch prices be in effect for 2019 2020 school year. So Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, use of school facilities and transportation by outside for profit organizations be resolved with the following rates be approved for the use of school facilities and transportation by outside for profit organizations for the 2019 2020 school year. So, second. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Uh, what about for nonprofit organizations? Do we allow them to use it without cost? Pretty much so, depending on what the event is. But yes, our facilities are usually open for for um, free use as long as it's available. Yeah, so we don't charge. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 19.1 be resolved 19.2 to 19.5 be approved via consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, the Hacks and Scholarship Fund, so we broke this one out uh, because we'll need to appoint the uh, school board member to be on the Hacks and Scholarship Fund committee. I've served past few years I've volunteered to do it again if nobody else really really wants to be on I do enjoy being on okay so we can write me in there and I guess I'll be getting approved with that uh, so be resolved the following persons be appointed to the board of directors of the Hacks and Scholarship Fund for the 2019-2020 school year second any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, committee assignments. Uh, so we need to come up with who's going to be on these committees. Uh, the tech committee. I would like to be on the tech committee, but we would have to have another discussion about its role and what it does. Because at the last committee meeting, unlike all the other committees that seem to function and make decisions and have input and produce something, that we were informed that, that according to Mr. Crum, that that committee is only an advisory committee. So I would think that that committee needs a little reworking if it's merely an advisory committee and doesn't have the same function as the other board committees. But I would like to be on it again. Okay. Uh, health and wellness. It was me. I'll take it again if no one wants it. All right. Safety. Okay. I'm willing to continue. Okay. Code of conduct. It's been a lot of work, but I'll uh, keep doing it. Thank you. I'll do the Haxton, uh, Soar. Um, I can do that, man. Who's, who's currently on Soar? Yeah. Who's currently on Soar? It was Jeff. Jeff's off of it now. Bonnie and myself. Bonnie. So it'll be three of us. Um, I think we've got four. Interested? Are you interested? Uh, I am, but if Justin wants to do it, that's fine. I can. Go ahead. Bonnie. Be on the committee. Well, are you interested, Bonnie? If nobody else wants to. Sounds well, like those two want so to. to. Do you? I care one way or the other. Okay. I'm fine with it or without it. it sounds like okay. Justin and Chris are interested. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. That's with you, ma'am? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, be resolved that the uh, just decided upon uh, Board of Education members be appointed as committee members for those following committees for the 2019 2020 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Uh, be resolved that the reorganizational meeting be adjourned at 6 30.
Second. Second. Discussion on um, favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Passes. Okay. Stanford plus your flag. Resolved that the minutes of the 618 2019 regular meeting be approved. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes? I don't think we have any visitors, so I'll assume no visitor requests. Nope. Uh, warrants be resolved after an audit of the bills, payment of the 613 and 620 warrants, and internal claims, audit reports be approved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. We're on to the second reading of two policies. John, I'll let you take it away on the Sure. Um, this is the second reading of those two policies that FMLA, um, again, pretty self explanatory. The board may just want to review um, the time frame. There's a part in the FMLA. Um, policy in regards to uh, computing the time frame of the 12 month period for which FML leave is being requested. Um, again, not that changes need to be done, but the district has to customize, you know, by choosing the ABCD for calculating the 12 month period upon the request. Um, why don't we start Can there? Sh sure. Sorry. I know you were I'm the, one who, I'm the one who uses this one probably right. the most because I have to send the letters out to um, the staff. So right now we currently use the rolling 12 month period. So if we just select that for consistency purposes, so D. it's helpful. Because that's what we're doing. Okay. Huh. And then it says um, district option. Uh, employers may but are not required to have employees use paid leave concurrently with periods of FMLA. Um, we do require that they use them concurrently just because that's, we wouldn't want to have somebody not paid for three months and then um, extend that leave, especially when um, the majority of our staff are teachers. We want them to use their um, the sick time that they've earned, that's what it's there for. And both uh, unions have sick bank as well, so they can they can use that if they apply and then approve for that for their union. So, and that's very typical that you would use your leave uh, concurrently. Um, so then they don't really have family medical leave, do they? Yes, because no, if you're if you have a medical condition and you have to be out for 12 weeks, you're not going to have most people don't have 12 weeks of, of time, so they they do get that, but it may not be paid. So you if right. you've got the bank, you've got to use it. If you don't have it, you still get right. It. You just I mean, it's it. just like other forms of, of comp before you're gonna before our workers comp will kick in for people that are injured on the job, they have to use their sick time and or then that gets reimbursed after the fact, so. But once that's exhausted, then you have access. To, once you've used your sick time, then you would. Right. Well, FMLA would run concurrently with your sick time. So say somebody um, in the union um, is pregnant and has to be out on FMLA and, and wants to use their FMLA. Right. They would use, say they only have, I mean, we have a couple instances, they have six weeks of sick time or sick they can take up to that 12 week period, but six weeks of that will not be paid. Right. So, and, I, and that 12 week limit was put on there so that uh, staff is not abusing that. Because what happens is then you're getting your, your benefits for those six weeks without having worked to receive them, potentially. 
You know what I'm saying? So they want they're trying so to your health insurance is still active. Correct. Too, your health insurance and your job still stays. So and that's the way the contract reads. Their contract doesn't read any, their contract doesn't read anything. It's based on the policy. So if Wendy breaks her both her legs and can't work. She has to use all of her sick time that she has available, and then the rest of it up to 12 weeks. So FMLA really would kick in if she has a serious medical condition. Mm -hmm. She would also use her sick time at the same time. If she ran out of that time, then we can't penalize her within that 12 weeks if she's not better. So she uses up her, let's say she had six weeks of sick time. Mm -hmm. Then after that six weeks, she still she only gets six more weeks of family medical leave. It's not like you get twelve weeks. Yep. But if so the doctor happens. doesn't clear her back to work, like say right, right, right. then right. she doesn't have to come back to work, right, until the doctor clears it. Right, but it's not like she used her sick time and then when that was out and the doctor said, "Oh my gosh, there's complications," and so her two broken legs aren't healed. Sorry, and she doesn't get twelve on top of that. Correct. That is correct. Well, those extra six are unpaid anyway. Right. Yeah. And then hopefully that would be at the end of the summer if something bad happened. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> well, well, if my six weeks ran out, then it would kick into the same thing. Yes. Well, and then, so if it fell in the middle, she that would extend. Right. Let's yes. talk about summer here or something that happened. If what yeah. fell in the middle, it would extend. So if she broke them uh, uh at the beginning June of June, and then it needed to extend. the The county would be that four weeks, and then continue to count in, and then in September. Six weeks in September, right? Yeah. Okay. So it wouldn't it's four weeks. So yes. Yeah. If that happens, make sure you do it right. Yeah. Make sure you do if it. If that happens, first. the first person I'm calling for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the summer. <laughs> So this is all basically required and legal, um, and we're already doing it and following it. So everybody's aware. So can you just, can we write this policy as we're discussing it right now? We're gonna approve this at the next meeting so that we get rid of, it's D you said, right? Not A, yep. B, or C. Right. So we just get rid of A, B, and C. Yep. And we get rid of the yellow highlighted stuff that talks about customizing. But basically just write the policy as you're proposing, as we're proposing it be, and we'll approve it as yeah. it's written. Is there any so, other? Yeah, so we can present that to you um, as stated for the next board meeting, the third reading. Is there anything else anybody wanted to talk about in that policy? Okay, let's do that next one. And then, um, uh, the comprehensive student attendance. Um, I'd include in my weekly memos just some of my notes in regards to, I know, <clears throat> basically excused and unexcused is required um, by the state. And so we just have to review what we're using as excused and unexcused. Um, now I know uh, Lorna brought up last time, given, you know, given our community is farming and missing school for opening hunting season, is that excused or unexcused? Um, that is really again. Um, I would be more working. Hunting was a separate issue from working on the farm. Just yeah. to clarify. That. So um, again, if if that's something that the board wants to change, um, currently hunting or hunting on opening day is an unexcused absence. If that's something that the board wants to make an excuse, that would be something that that you could certainly decide upon. Um, and. Part of my notes really goes back to um, the process. I, I do have a little bit of a concern if we are restrictive in amount of absences that a child has before they are physically dropped from a course. The concern that I have is we do have students that um, 
currently right now in the contract, if a student has more than 27 absences in a course, um, they could very easily not receive course credit. The concern I have with that is, what if the student is still actually passing that course? Um, that there may be some um, outstanding circumstances that a student has 27 absences. Um, you may just want to be a little generic in that um, you have a process that the word may not receive, depending on the circumstance um, in regards to receiving credit for a course. And if you go down to um, the next page in regards to notice of minimum attendance standards intervention strategies, you do currently have a policy and a, and a, and a procedure, which I will be honest with you, I don't know how to the letter of the law it's been followed in the past, but you do have five phases of notification. So as a student, um, would next year with this board approval um, in a full year course meet 10 absences a letter would go home stating to the family and the student that there's 10 absences after 15 there's a notification and a personal phone call after 20 there's actually a meeting with the you know more so this is for middle school high school more so high school because it actually deals with credits um, a meeting with the parent and the high school administration after 25 absences um, there would be a superintendent meeting with me, and then um, after 27, then there would be a hearing for denial of, of a course. That is actually currently in the policy, um, which I would say that you would probably still like to keep. Um, but you have that flexibility on those number of days. I don't know if that is something that you want to change or you want to keep. I would like there to be flexibility. Because the other part that I ask about unexcused and excused absences, um, I don't think it's fair for students who are minors to be penalized if their family takes them on a vacation. In the past, as a teacher, I was given direction that I could not allow students to make up work that they missed if they were absent for illegal being taken away by their parents on a family vacation. Now whether I approved of the family taking them on that vacation during school hours or school days is immaterial. The, the child had no, even if he's a big hairy adolescent child, he has no control over that. His parents made the reservations. so. You're saying the flexibility on the 27 days thing? Like he was just Well, that might be nope. currently going on vacation is an unexcused absence in our policy. Or in now, list. that being said, within the policy, when you're talking about the number of days when a letter would go home that you have missed 10 days of school, it doesn't matter if excused or unexcused. You're not here, you're not here. Right. So, you know, we have to mark it per the state as is it an excused or unexcused. But to be honest with you, when a child misses 10, day, 10 days, whether they're excused or unexcused, a letter's gonna go home. Um, I'd like to have the flexibility of, you know, behind the scenes understanding, okay, you're receiving this letter because you took two weeks vacation. Whether they're excused or unexcused, you know, we have that flexibility of, of understanding the reasons behind their absences, so to say. Mm -hmm. I don't want to really get bogged down with the excused and unexcused. It's the rest of the wording, having that flexibility of stating, do we know why you're absent? And, you know, like you said, um, I mean, a child's going to get Mark absent if he does go on a family vacation. Um, whether you, again, whether you mark it excused or unexcused. Well, it's two issues. I would like you to have that flexibility mm -hmm. to review the list and then to make a judgment, your best judgment call. I want there to be consistency in the policy, but I would like you to have that flexibility. If the state is keeping a record of excused and unexcused, I don't know what the state wants that record for or where that information is going, but if it's going to ever come back to bite a student, I would like it. If they it was an absence they had no control over, I would like it to be marked excused. If I'm sure the parents here 
have taken their children out of school for a reason they thought was valid and didn't realize perhaps until you get up to the adolescent age what the kid faces when that's an unexcused absence and the disapproval and the mark against you and the block. Well, Lauren, 27 so days is a, is, a, is a large number of days. Yes, it is. And when you so that's a that separate 27, issue. I mean, if one of your students missed 27 days of content, they probably, under most circumstances, shouldn't be receiving credit for your class. A lot of students are extremely diligent and made up every single thing and stayed every I haven't school experienced and, that uh, yeah. in too many cases. When I get to 27 days, that kid should probably be seeing me for another year. Uh, very rarely do I have kids that are, are, are able to, to teach themselves at home or have the help. From well, I didn't say teach them at home. I said they stay after school, they make up their work. Their, um, I have had it. So I, I just want. I'm in favor to, as well of changing the not a hard 27 right, days but to be able around to what it. it may be. It needs to be reviewed. It. I think yeah. it to be. But again, we have Howie too, where when we start getting these absences, Howie's out there checking these houses to see why these kids are missing. We're not just letting them skip 27 days and hoping for the best. We do have the procedures. But instead of saying 27 days and you're done with that classroom, I would say be able to so, so that when may, you, may be, that right, may depending important. on their circumstances right. and, and they're passing somehow right. and maybe they've taught themselves at home, then, then why completely penalize them and make them start all over again when we're... Right. So, so there's, it's twofold here. So when you look at the excused and unexcused, the board's going to have to decide in this policy what they want as excused absences or unexcused absences. I'm hearing Lorna saying that um, there are times where kids, you know, again, they're not gonna be here if they're on a family vacation. Do you right. want that in an excused or unexcused absence? I think it should be excused. It's not like I, I approve of parents doing it. But I, a little limit on that? I don't think you should penalize students. Again, as in Oakfield, Alabama, we were directed as teachers, don't allow this kid to have any, don't allow the kid. If he comes in with a sheaf of papers and everything perfectly done, don't allow him credit for that. And if the kid <laughs> didn't oversleep and stay home playing video games, if the kid was taken to Acapulco by his parents, that's not the kid's fault. I should be able to, as a teacher, accept that she was made up work and give him credit for it. Well, can, can you not accept the work even on an unexcused absence? We were directed not to. Well, that does that mean that so that's I think the direction that, now? Yeah, you're not going to direct them. That policy's not going to come from us, though. I mean, that's going to so come from internal. you going down to the administration well, it was contained in here. As a teacher, I thought that was contained. No, that's going to go through the admin, and they're going to decide whether or not they're going to accept that. And like I said, it, this is very, this is a difficult conversation because there are excused and unexcused absences, but the bottom line is if a kid is not here, he's not here. Right. Um, teachers, I think, you know, if Wendy has a student that's been out a day or two, um, she, you know, she's going to know whether the kid was sick or whether the kid was on vacation and so those are discussions that we're going to have to have with administration as far as what is work accepted or not accepted if a kid's not in your class for whatever reason i would hope that there would be a grace period that the kid could turn in but if a kid is going on vacation for two weeks i think the timeline is i mean that have to be worked out with the teacher you know and i know teachers are hesitant to, to provide work to kids you know before the break, but is that kid now coming and staying after school and doing the extra things that we expect him to do to make up the work? That's something that administration and teachers would have to work out. I don't think that needs to be here in the policy. Well, that's what I want to make sure of because I was a teacher. I was directed by administration. It was appealed higher up by parents and students and teachers. The administration said, no, that kid can't have credit. Now I'm on the board. I don't want that policy to come from us that kid does not have the ability to make up work. If, as I said, it was nothing the child was in control of. But if you mark it as an unexcused absence, that deters the parents from taking vacations when I know. Yeah. You know, so at least if they know it's unexcused absence, then they're less likely to take them off for two weeks. You'd like to think so. I would hope so. As long as it doesn't come from anything I vote in favor of, 
that that's what we're going to do to students, then I'm okay with it. But if it's coming from here, that that's what we're directing administration to tell teachers, then I don't want to be a part of that. And that's not here, right? So that's going to be an internal sort of building policy. Yeah, and, and the the policy that that prior boards and that the district has had has come from the Erie One Policy Services. So that is their recommendation from the state on how the policy should read. Um, there is some leeway into what we do and part of this are your phases um, which I do um, you know I do support as far as I, I think it comes down to the wording that if a child reaches 27 absences um, they may lose you know course credit kind of like what Justin has said and I think it I think it's a it's a case-by-case -case basis why is that kid missing 27 days of your class? If the kid is injured and he's on home instruction, technically he's not in your class. Right. That is an absence. Mm -hmm. Whether it's excused or unexcused, it, you know, obviously it's excused, the kid is still missing 27 absences. So you would probably say, okay, you know, the kid can receive course credit as a kid that has 27 unexcused absences because we have no idea where he is. We've done home visits with the SRO. We've tried to contact parents. We have no idea where this child is. That's a whole different scenario where, you know, we can, you know, strong arm them and say, you're not going to have course credit. So I think this it's a case by policy gives you that flexibility, then that's good with me. And I think it does come down to that phase five where there's a hearing for the denial of course credit. And I think where um, the policy does state that it would come down to administration and the superintendent in conjunction with the teachers um, of having a hearing for should they receive credit or not. Okay. Is there anything else within that we need to? Well, like I said, I, I guess um, it really does go back to what the board wants to decide as an excused or unexcused absence. It sounds like you're saying it doesn't matter. So I don't. Know In the long run, it doesn't. I, we could sit here and argue whether we want a vacation to be excused or unexcused, or you know, opening day of hunting season to be excused or unexcused. There, then when I get to that's what bottom I'm line saying. is, it really boils down to how many kids through the new, you know, every student succeeds act. We, it's still an absence. So if it doesn't really matter, then why don't we make them all excused? It must matter somehow. Because there's a difference between the school knowing where the child is, whether they are on vacation and we receive a note from the parent saying, yeah, my child was sick and threw up and we didn't send them to school, then not receiving a note at all or having any conversation with the parent on why the child was not in school. That's the difference. I'd say as a parent, it's something that you notice when a note comes home and it says your child was not in school and this is considered an unexcused absence. There's been times when we felt like with our children, we were taking them out for a good reason and it comes home with an unexcused absence. Um, but hearing everything you're saying here, John, is a cumulative number. Right. So, so whether, to, well, Bonnie's, to Bonnie's point, maybe it does matter, the, the family vacation, if that's excused or unexcused, and you're going to be less likely. If, if that's the only, only reason I can come up with why. Well, if it doesn't matter, then make them all excused. Because otherwise, I think it does matter. And I think... It matters to our, uh, our school as a district as far as record keeping of, do we know why, why a child was not in school? If we know that the child was sick and the parents call that morning and say, my child's not coming to school because they were sick, we always say, okay, can you please bring in a note? Mm -hmm. That's an excused absence. But there are many instances where a child hasn't been in school for two or three days. We can't make contact with parents. And after three days, we do send our SRO out to do a home visit to find out where the child is. Um, sometimes we do get an answer. Oh, the child was sick. Well, why didn't you let the school know? So there are repercussions for the child for if they don't bring a note in. Sometimes that that the child has detention. That categorizes truancy, correct? So the kid pays a price, and at the middle high school, the kid pays a price. I don't know about the elementary it school. Depends on the circumstance, but yes, there are times where so yes. If a student has unexcused absences too many in a row, because even though their parent made communication, 
the kid pays the price for the parent's decision. And well, that's the part that I think is unfair. If we have communication with the parent and it's understandable why the child was not here, those are excused absences. But if we don't hear from the parent and then we're we tracing the kid down. Vacation with, because that, the parents communicate about that. So are you saying that if the students said they were going on vacation with their parents and they were gone for a week, they could get detention for that? They can. They can. They could and I don't know about now. Could in the past. But again, we have a lot of students that will leave school or not be in school because they're on a college road That's trip. That's excused. That's educational. Right. That's excused. A road test. Again, we know why they're out. But again, under this policy, it's unexcused. I know. Bottom line is we can sit here and go, okay, is it excused or unexcused? Bottom line is you're still absent or you're still leaving school. Or as long as there are no in. repercussions. And that's why this phase policy comes in. Um, once they reach 27 absences, it doesn't say 27 unexcused absences. So how it's are detentions going to be administered to middle high school students who have unexcused absences? That's based on each child in each circumstance, and that's up to administration. Well, so that's what I want our policy to cover. If a kid is going to be penalized for a decision made by a parent, I don't think that's right. If and maybe I will tell care. you that we don't penalize kids for being out of school on vacation. They okay. don't come back and sit in detention for the next five days. We may ask them to stay after school because now there's work that needs to be made up, but they're not going to be penalized and have detention or in-school suspension because they were on vacation with their family. I can tell you that that won't happen. But that's what I want to know. Okay. But I don't think that needs to be stated in the policy. But. Those are conversations that we could have if and when that comes down to it. Well, that's good. Is there anything else then? So, same thing with this one, you'll format it. So, there's the one like completely blank page, it's on our, <clears throat> and then just yes. some of these other things where it says the district may or may not, and, and things like that. You'll format it so that it is as it will be in the policy manual. Correct. And I do, and I, um, the student attendance policies are not personally hand delivered to each parent and each student. We will provide them in the handbook that we provide on the website so some of the omits and the crossing offs I have just reflects that. Okay, so I guess we'll so I can revisit yep. that again. Where would we put them? We don't need to worry about that. No, it doesn't need to be board. I don't think it needs board approved. Yeah, we can, we, we we just, board you can just tell us right. to pay yeah. for the, was it the $95 for the next two years? Two years. He doesn't serve, I don't think he needs to donate. I think we can. I'll put it with that. See, there's serious. I was about to live with that. See how serious you want about it. I think we can take care of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know when you get nervous, as all business officials do. Hey, neighbor. Right, Andrew? <laughs> okay, let's move on to doing business and uh, be resolved that uh, 72 through 75 be approved via consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes? Communications? Um, Not much here. I was allowed to say so. On the communications? Yeah. Sure. Um, just a couple things. First of all, I'd like to welcome Justin to the board. I look forward to um, doing lots of great work. It's a great board. We're moving forward. We're moving in the right direction. So welcome to the board, and I look forward to um, the relationship that we'll have. Uh, and accomplishing some great things in the near future. Um, I'd like to thank Jordan and his crew for the job that they're doing right now. Obviously, you know we're moving sixth grade back to this. There have been a lot of room changes. We've uh, displaced Rob, a um, lot of room changes, a lot of things going on, and they have done a fantastic job. It's probably twice to three times the work that maybe they would normally not in, you know, endure if we were just kind of having this as status quo. So I just want to uh, 
uh, give a shout out to Jordan and his crew. Um, they've already uh, renovated the, the high school uh, gymnasium. If you want to take a look at that after you leave, it's all fantastic. It looks, it's all varnished and ready to go for the summer. Um, I also want to welcome Connie Rockow, uh, our new director of CIA. She began yesterday and she's already jumping right in. We already had her in, in a couple of workshops already, so um, we're excited to have her. We are posting for an elementary position, a full-time technology position, and a full-time teaching assistant position. So that should be already in the papers on the Winnie Rick site and will hopefully be in the Buffalo Job Finder uh, this coming weekend. So we'll get moving on those postings for the fall. And um, Tim, I'm happy to announce to the and to the rest of the board that the pool and fitness center will be open to the community this summer. The fitness center will be open Monday through Thursdays from 5.30 to 7.30, free of charge. And the pool will be open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 8, free of charge. And that begins next week through the end of August. So if the community is listening, uh, take advantage of that. It's fully supervised with certified lifeguards and certified staff. So enjoy. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, discussion roundtable. Nothing was submitted. Any, has anything popped up? Okay. Personnel. Um, be result items 10 2 through 10 5. Be approved in the consent agenda. Someone. Any discussion? I'd like to say we accept uh, the retirement of Mrs. Gelder with regrets. Okay. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah. My son just finished with Mrs. Gelder and she had you know, a wonderful year with her. She's fantastic. So you had us do those separately, right? Your appointments yes. and all that. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else on those 10 through 10 5? What's the name of the speech pathologist? So that'll be next. That's up, right? yeah. yeah, that'll be 10 through 10 5. Uh, all in favor, 10 through 10-5? Oh, in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, passes. 10-6, uh, appointment of the speech pathologist. Uh, recommend approving the appointment of Monica Dunleavy-Lang to a four-year probationary position, uh, effective September 1st. I have a motion. Hello. Second. Second. Any discussion? We are granting her one year of service as far as her tenure, so we're tenured for all. She had six years previous, right? Wasn't she at whole season? So, seven years? Yes. Yeah. So she's so she, yep. so she's Correct. Yeah. <coughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 10 7. I'll be resolved the resignation of Jennifer Stearns, effective uh, July 22nd. Be accepted. So moved. Second. Any discussion? She'll also be missed. She, did really she just great. received tenure last meeting, right? Didn't she no. just get tenure? I wish her the best of luck in her new admin position. Tenure's a teacher. So she's, yeah, she's moving on. Yes. Yeah. It was anticipated. Yeah. 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 You had to go through the motions. Yeah, that. sure. <laughs> got, got. Moving, moving up to admin, so good luck to her. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes? 10A, be resolved the resignation of Katie Mangus, uh, teacher assistant coach, effective June 22nd. 26th, be accepted. Second. Second. Any discussion? Say so good luck to Katie. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time here. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes. 10 9, be resolved the retirement request of Claudia Gelder, teacher, effective 20, uh, December 31st, 2019, be accepted. So moved. With regrets. And appreciation. Second. Second. Any other discussion, regrets from Lauren and appreciation from Lauren and Bonnie? Mm -hmm. And myself as well. Same. Should be missed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, Monica, the new speech pathologist is here. Okay. So just wanted to introduce Monica uh, to just the board. Hi, Monica. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, executive session. We resolve the Board of Education in our executive session at uh, 704 for purposes of contract negotiation. So, 
Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nice. Right. <laughs>